Como ya sabéis, San Alman siempre está de gira y bueno, en este caso ha estado en la Universidad de Howard de 1867 y ha dicho, como siempre, cosas muy interesantes, así que vamos a ver el vídeo y luego lo comentamos. Uh, I think critical thinking, creativity, the ability to figure out what other people want, the ability to have new ideas, that In some sense, that, that'll be the most valuable skill of the future. If you think of a world where every one of us has a whole company worth of AI assistants that are doing tasks for us to help us express our vision and um, make things for other people and make these new things in the world, the most important thing then will be the quality of the ideas, um, the curation of the ideas, because AI can generate lots of great ideas, but... You still need a human there to say this is the thing other people want. And also, humans, I think, really care about the human behind something. So when I read a, bo a book that I really love, the first thing I want to do is go read about that author. And if an AI wrote that book, uh, I think I'll somehow connect to it much less. Same thing when I look at a great piece of art. Or if I am using some company's product, I want to know about the people that, that created that. So I think in both directions of humans knowing what other humans want and also humans caring about the humans behind something, Um, this will be, that'll be a super important skill. Uh, and so I think learning that ability to create, come up with new ideas, choose ideas from among the many options presented by an AI, uh, that'll be very valuable. I agree with you, the tools will change, but I also think familiarity with the tools of today and this new way of using computers is really important. That'll be important for everyone. Not just the tool builders, but everybody, like in the same way that if you can't use a mobile phone, you're kind of at a huge disadvantage, but they're not that hard to use and people learn. But the earlier in your career you got familiar with it, the earlier in life, uh, life, the better. You know, everybody in this room was familiar with it probably as long as you can remember. But uh, I, rem I remember watching older people struggle with getting comfortable with a phone for the first time, as intuitive as I thought they were. Uh, I, think it, I, I, I think human adaptability is remarkable. And so... I'm very happy that people no longer think it's weird or impressive that we can talk to a computer like we talk to a human and it understands us and it talks back to us and it does things for us. But two years ago, almost no one believed that was going to be possible anytime soon. You know, two years ago, what happens now with using ChatGPT was the stuff of sci-fi at best. And if you told the world this was going to be part of people's daily lives two years later, I think they would have said, of course not, you know, that's, that's a Hollywood thing. And this is a significant change the world has just gone through. Um, I think this is probably, well, certainly this is the most significant change to how we use computers since the touch screens on mobile phones. Um, but I think it'll probably be much, much bigger than that. You'll be able to just say it, tell a computer, like you would tell a friend or an employee, I need this thing to happen, or what do you think about this? Or can you help me out with this? Or how do you think about this? And it'll just do it for increasingly complex definitions of it. You know, right now it can maybe like write some code for you, edit a paper for you, uh, you know, help you analyze things, but someday it'll write a whole program for you, uh, do a whole research project for you, help you come up with new ideas, uh, someday not in the far future. So I think this is a very big deal. Yeah. If I just follow up, uh, 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 last week I was at a, international conference on biocomputing and discussions of chat bt chat gpt occupied a, a fair amount of discussion at that at that uh m meeting and there came a time when someone asked the question relative to chat gpt where are we in as, as a society and almost to a person it was believe that we are at a transformative time. Yeah. We are at a transformative time, not necessarily because of the technical genius that's in ChatGPT, but it's transformative because it's so easy for everyone to use. Whether you're a STEM person or a humanities person, you're a housewife, whether you're a middle schooler. And, 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 and so uh, I'll follow up with you on, on that is, is that is that it is seen, at least the people in, at that conference, they were all professional research investigators. And they were, to the person, said, this, this is a, we had a transformative moment, almost like when 
the internet was was the entrance to, to do this. Would you want to comment on that? One of so I'll answer it in two parts. First of all, uh, I agree about the magnitude of this transformation because what is happening is we are going from a world in which intelligence is limited and expensive to abundant and cheap. And if you think about how much any of you could do if you had a massive amount of cognitive labor at your disposal to build the ideas you want to see happen, to be useful to other people, to provide services and advice, um, you know, right now you can hire people and you can coordinate them and it's kind of difficult and very expensive. And most people in the world cannot afford nearly as much, let's call it cognitive service as they like. Um, you know, not many people can afford great lawyers, for example. That's a very specialized, very expensive kind of cognitive service. If the cost of that, the availability of that comes down by a factor of 100 or a factor of 10,000, And not just for legal advice, because I don't think anyone needs like lots more legal back and forth, but for all the stuff we do want, great entertainment, great products and services, everything else, great education, great medical care, uh, that is a profound shift to the world. So we're super excited about that. And I think that everyone can feel what the magnitude of that transformation looks like. Your second point is actually not a question that I've been asked many times, and I think it's a great one, so I appreciate it. Um, one of the things that I learned at YC, uh, Y Common Air, and also what I learned as I was like a kid studying the history of technology, is you can never go too far making a technology easy to use and accessible. Um, every, you know, every like 10% easier to use, you can make a technology, maybe twice as many people use it, or they use it twice as much, or there's this huge thing. And so we had this technology that we knew was pretty cool. We didn't know quite how much people were going to like it, but we had a sense they were. And we put it out first in an API and like some nerds had a good time with it, but not very many. And it was kind of like unknown in the world. We put, we put GPT-3 out in the API. I think it was in like June, maybe it was July of 2020, 2020, something like that. Uh, And, you know, people built stuff and other, but we started thinking then about like, what is, what is the, best, simplest, most natural user interface that we can build on this. And I've had this observation that computers had trended over time um, to be as close to the way we interact with other humans or we interact with with our physical world as as possible. So you started out with like punch cards to program computers. I don't know how those people did it. It sounds amazing to me. Like, what an unnatural way to use a computer. And they're, like, literally, like, sorting these things out on the floor. Wild. But they did it. And then you had command lines, and that was, like, a little better. There's somewhat of, like, a kind of framework I can see for that, but I'm grateful I never really had to use those computers. And then you had the graphical user interface. And now, finally, we're getting something towards more like something the way we interact with the world. Uh, And a lot of people started to use it. And we knew how to point at things, and the mouse was a reasonable analog for that. The keyboard was kind of fake, but it was, like, good enough. And this idea that we had these, like, windows and graphical information displayed to us, like we look at the world, we look at a screen. Bueno, como siempre, es un placer escuchar a Sam. Y, bueno, es, dice cosas bastante interesantes. Eh, todo me parece que, que podría ser un titular. Pero, bueno, lo último es, es una de las cosas que siempre pasa en tecnología, Tenían las versiones previas de, de GPT, que como son versiones que ahora los pequeños modelos de lenguaje pues era muy similar y pues nadie la utilizaba. ¿Por qué? Porque tenías que acceder a través de APIs, muy poca gente conocía que existía y bueno, pues los NER, que tal y como lo, los ha llamado, pues se conectaban, hacían cosas asombrosas. Recuerda que ellos tienen los modelos, así que cada vez que alguien preguntaba algo por API, ellos sabrían que para qué se estaban utilizando, para generación de código, etcétera, pero hasta que no lo haces tan sencillo como lo que estaban comentando, que lo puede utilizar desde el abogado más especializado con años de estudio hasta un chaval que está estudiando segundo de la ESO, pues ahí hay una, una gran diferencia de conocimiento, no se extiende en este tipo de tecnologías, así que muy, muy bien, todos estamos esperando nuevas versiones o la versión de GPT-5, pero mientras llega, pues bueno, todo este tipo de, de conversaciones son muy, muy útiles. Como siempre, espero que os haya gustado el vídeo. 
poner en el comentario que es el titular que más os ha gustado, que me ayuda un montón y nos vemos en el siguiente vídeo.